almost. Here. 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 Okay, this time I'll turn the meeting over to our city manager, Pete Rogers, to uh, give us a video. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. I wanted to remind the community that this Wednesday, uh, the city is hosting an open house and job fair from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Rocky Mount Event Center. And this event is ideal for residents who are looking for new career opportunities or seeking to expand their professional network. Uh, as we've stated, there will be prize drawings, as well as employment opportunities. Also, uh, would like to share tonight, uh, the Juneteenth Community Empowerment Festival takes place this downtown uh, this weekend, and so we have a video highlight that we'd like to share this evening. <laughs> The Juneteenth Community Empowerment Festival in downtown Rocky Mount runs for three exciting days, June 16th through the 18th. Come out and be entertained, inspired, and empowered by an impressive lineup of performers, speakers, vendors, and more. The first night kicks off with a black party featuring the Earth, Wind, and Fire tribute band. On Saturday, more music, headlined by Mr. Talkbox and Marcus Anderson. And Sunday is a full day of praise and gospel music, headlined by Luther Barnes and Hezekiah Walker. Get the full list of details at downtownrockymount.com. And finally tonight, I would like to remind the, uh, everyone that the next Downtown Live will be happening on Thursday, June 22nd on the lawn at the Imperial Center, and it begins at 6 p.m., and this uh, month's band will be North Tower. Thank you, Mayor. That concludes my announcement. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Anybody have any comments or questions for our manager? Okay. Moving on right along, we'll come on to uh, presentation of Lions Club, police officer and firefighter of the year, planks and checks. Mm -hmm. opportunity of coming and fellow citizens of, of Rocky Mount. Uh, 
I'm Dr. Bob Cameron. I'm president of the Rocky Mountain Lions Club. And every year for the past, and I'm sorry, I don't actually know how many years, something over 30 years, I believe it is, uh, the Rocky Mountain Lions <coughs> Club has presented a Police Officer of the Year and Firefighter of the Year Award. These awards are nominated by their departments and voted on by all their peers. So this is not something that, uh, sorry Chief, but the upper grass go through and say we're going to pick this one, but this they are voted uh, by all their peers and uh, elected as the Firefighter of the Year and Police Officer of the Year. So it is my great honor to ask uh, Fire Chief Drury and Firefighter Carl Spruill and his wife, Come forward. Chief Hassel and Corporal William Mayfield and his wife.
which you are held by your peers as citizens too often, we do not recognize the protection services that you provide. Rockland is lucky to have dedicated professionals like you in our police department. We thank you for choosing service for the community as your profession. This is no way to compensate you for the risk you take on our behalf, but we hope the small token of our appreciation will let you know that you have our thanks and our support. There's a lot I could say about Corporal Mayfield, uh, but I would um, let the citizens that are here know that he is a 16-year veteran of the Rocky Mountain Police Department, and it was no surprise to me for him to be selected by his peers as a 2022-23 Officer of the Year. Um, as a corporal within our agency, you know, our officers don't have the formal rank structure, sergeants, lieutenants, and up. But it's those corporals, like Corporal Mayfield, that many of our officers look up to and they go to for guidance uh, when they need help. Um, and for me, as a chief, uh, Officer Mayfield exemplifies our core values, which we expect from all of our officers. Fairness, integrity, respect, and the most professionalism for every citizen and those who visit our great city we serve. So I also thank you for um, not only your service, but for being recognized as an officer of the year. So. <coughs> Cameron, I want to thank you as a Lions Club for coming here tonight, celebrating our law enforcement and first, you know, environment as well. So again, Captain School, Corporal Mayfield, congratulations on the state honor tonight. That brings us to number eight on our agenda, which is our petitions to receive from the public. <laughs> so the public petitions portion of the city council meeting is an opportunity for public comment. And the city council appreciates your attendance and thanks you for expressing your views and opinions. City Council values all citizen input. And this is an opportunity to raise a question or present a request to Council. However, in most cases, Council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer a matter to the City Manager or staff for follow-up. Time will be monitored in order to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have three minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the Security Officer prior to the opening of the City Council meeting. And if an organized group is present to speak on the issue, Please go to one word to the comments. If your comments are in regard to an item that is subject to a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time may be granted. The City Council requests that you please adhere to the following guidelines. Complete the sign-in sheet. Address comments to the Council as a whole and not to individual Council members or City staff. Speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner. Personal attacks, which have the potential to disrupt the meeting, will not be tolerated, and you'll be asked to sit down or be removed from the meeting. Keep comments to three minutes. This time, I'd like to invite Robert Cordell to the podium. Good evening. Mayor Robinson, City Council members, and other platform personnel. My name is Robert Cordell, and I live at 3300 Brookfield Drive, 13 
Rocky Mountain City on the ride to the center of it all. There you go. I come to ask you for um, three items of consideration. The first is the song uh, to be repaired or replaced at the same wire. The senior citizen needs the song. The senior citizen wants the song. And it will help our overall health. And it shouldn't cost that much to uh, repair or replace it. If you need a petition from the senior citizen at that center, I can get that for The second item is on the car registration. We have a Nash County tax, an Eastcombe County tax, if you stay on the Eastcombe County side, a Rocky Mountain tax, and a Rocky Mountain garage tax. I'm asking the senior council, would you please consider eliminating this, this garage tax? Uh, we have been taxed enough. Uh, we're paying one of the highest uh, excise tax in the whole nation. And uh, you see state, local, and uh, federal funds. And so this one tax can be eliminated. I don't think you all be off the this. So uh, asking to eliminate that tax. And the third and final thing we're asking to do is the uh, East Town Street and West Town Street uh, to rename the street to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Uh, every major uh, city in North Carolina have a Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Uh, so why not us? As you know, Dr. King was here one time. He spoke um, at a home on West Thomas Street. He uh, had dinner with the Stokes home, uh, right beside the Booker T. Washington uh, Theater, not the Booker T. Washington Gym, and he had the first I have dream speech done at the Booker T. Gym. As you know, he's worthy of this recognition, and if you need a petition for that, it will require a lot of work, but I can get that to you. Uh, with the 23 blocks, the 36 businesses, the 184 housing units, and the five churches that are on the East Thomas Street stop to West Thomas Street at the link. Uh, please consider uh, renaming this street. And question is, who was West Thomas Street named now? Was it Tom Jefferson? Hopefully not. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cordell. I'd like to invite Pep Turn to the podium. Is this in relation to the budget? I don't have a public hearing on that letter. Yes. Yeah. If you'll just wait till the public hearing portion, that probably makes sense. Uh, I'll invite, uh, uh, is it Barney Jones? Show y'all what's really going on out here. 
Maybe the guy else I go to these guys every day. Good job, good, good, good job for the city. We got families we got to support. You know, we got to be able to tell anybody the rent going up, groceries going up. Like I said, some of them got to take a second job just to make ends meet. And that's sad. And that's better sad. So I'm going to challenge the work to go to try to do something. We're speaking for ourselves. We don't have anyone speaking up for us. We don't have anything to pop heads coming up and speaking for us at any time. We've got to take action for us. Just consider that. You know, consider the small ones. Like I said, my little king spoke up for us for sanitation. He did right for that. And y'all should do the same. Just look out. Do the right thing. I don't have to keep preaching up here and tell you that. The people see that. Just do the right thing for us. And I appreciate that. And thank you for listening to this. And like I said, Mayor, we invite you. I mean, the city man, we invite you to come down the park. We want to see you. We've been asking for you. Come down and see us. Let's talk. Let's see when we work some things out here. And I appreciate y'all for to speak on this behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Sound bite, or what the ask is. My question is, 
the portion of land that's uh, that's in we are talking about is in between the armory and the outfield fence of the ballpark. They're saying that's not on the map. But if you look at that map, that's outlined. That is deep on that map. That's deep on the map. I've been to Nash and got the deeds and everything else, the map of the ball field and everything else. I've done my work. So, Mr. Andrew, you're saying that our vote tonight is really moot, that this all belongs to the Rocky Mountain or the Nash County School Board? Actually, they're saying that you guys got to deed that land over there looking for a quick deed of that, not even an acre of land. It's 2.02 point something. You, you, you see it up there. That's what they're saying. You know, you know that walkway between the baseball field and the armory that leads from Howard Street back over to uh, Goddard uh, Street? And you that's what they're questioning. They're saying that the city never gave them that. But in 1977, when the city council and them did that land, gave that land to the school board, everything was included. If you look at the deed that I have there, you will see that it is. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, the question is yes, sir. Councilman Blackwell. Yes, sir. So do we have, um, that's, that's part of the reason we asked this before, because I was unclear. I knew that there were issues related to that. And um, from a legal perspective, I know that all of these pedestrian um, theater feet and leaves and all that is supposed to describe what this is. Yes. So are they saying is the school what is the school board saying to us? And have I has our legal department checked out? That would be a question. <coughs> Saying, I guess, based on a survey that they have done, that there's a little piece that was left out when the city uh, conveyed the municipal stadium in exchange for the uh, San Juan School in is that 77, I believe. Yeah. So it's not the whole amount, it's just a portion. Yeah. It's a uh, point two three eight. This might be the time when we, when we talk about the subject, but if you look at the packet, you can go to the map and see what I infer is what is in green uh, on page 59 of uh, the PDF that we received. We, which is right behind, according to what Mr. Harrington gave us, right behind the uh, house on the 14 off of Garden Street, if I understand it correctly. Yeah. So it's not a kind of field, it's a piece. It's just a piece. Are you on the page 59 of the map? Uh, they were 
place the deer after the deer of Rocky Mountain dropped out of the deer process. The deer was open for 29 days and allowed a billionaire company to get in to outbid uh, these young men who don't have uh, the deep pockets to compete. And if that's true, then that's the problem and it's not there and it needs to be exposed. That's the reason why I'm hoping that the city would ask our uh, city attorney uh, to request a public record request uh, in reference to the daily process so that we can see it. Those gentlemen asked for it, uh, but the school board denied their public request. Thank you. Councilman Dalton. I, I just would like to wait until we get this item so we can have a full session later. All right. All right, I like that. Let's move on. I invite that you, Joseph, to the podium. tonight on behalf of the Little Raleigh Community Association and accompanying me are some of our concerned members from the Little Raleigh community. As Vice President, it is my honor to make you aware of our community's plans to move forward and to request your consideration and support as we embark on this journey. Once a thriving community in Rocky Mountain, once a community that was always on the leading edge of progress, Little Raleigh today is but a shell of its former self. That spirit of pride that formed the foundation of an all-American neighborhood that anyone would feel blessed to live in has been muted for, for, from years of neglect. This is our cry for help. The community as a whole, and especially those of us who have been fortunate enough to be the recipients of generational wealth, have organized and made a commitment to rebuild and to revitalize our community. We will provide as many resources as we can, but we will ask you for assistance along the way. We are taxpayers and would like to see our taxes at work in our community. Our first step, our first step, our community association has begun adopting the streets of Little Raleigh to clean up our community, literally. As it turns out, street cleaning builds bonds faster and more long-lasting than months of meetings could do. We believe that the community that works together grows together. We are planning educational programs to educate our community about voting, home ownership, entrepreneurship, and a multitude of programs tailored to give our community the tools needed to lift Little Raleigh from the deaths of degradation suffered over the last several years. For your first step, we request that you maintain in good repair all city property that is located in Little Raleigh. We also request that you require those conducting business in our neighborhood to maintain the properties in which they have an interest. That means that realtors should be checking on unoccupied properties for rent to ensure that they are not becoming local dumping grounds and they are kept in good repair. We request that you encourage the desired behavior by doing everything within your power to penalize the continued disregard of our neighborhood. Little Raleigh is moving forward. We are going to do our part. We are going to ask you to support us as we forge forward. We ask that you see us. We ask that you hear us. And finally, we ask that you respond to us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilman Black. Yes. Yes. Um, I just want to thank Ms. Joseph and the writer. This is not my award. It's um, Councilman Walker's award. But um, it just sort of underscores the conversation we just had a few minutes ago. That um, it needs, that we need to, from our from 
many of our perspectives. It takes a majority to make anything good. But then uh, we need to hire an individual to target communities that are inner city, um, core city communities like the Raleigh, Happy Hill, uh, Meadowbrook, others, uh, both for the government proactive and then uh, to also look at code enforcement and uh, perhaps people who can help us navigate these um, creative opportunities to invest in our neighborhoods. If traditional developers are not going to look at us, then we got to go develop ourselves. Uh, we can't wait for someone to rescue us, we got to rescue ourselves. So I just want to use this as a prime example uh, that, that we are in sync, and I believe most of us were um, supportive of the, of the concept. We talked about it a lot, y'all. We wanted to take back and listen to our community the whole conversation. So thank you so much for coming in and articulating that better than three minutes than we did. Councilor Walker. Yeah, to the Little Rally Community Association, thank you all for uh, building up the courage and the strength to come out tonight. Uh, I know it's challenging. Thank you for all for coming. And hopefully, uh, this is the last time you have to come and really get to work and make sure that those changes are done. And again, thank you for your courage and for coming out. Great job. That's yeah, not the last time, but they need to keep coming. And everybody else needs to keep coming. Thank you, Councilor Jordan. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I know that all of our community, Fort King community, share the regards that you just shared. And we too look forward to putting the help there to help our community to reach these goals and objectives that they have laid down. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Boomer Sheikh to the Mr. Mayor, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen, today slavery is repackaged with low stagnant wages to oppress and exploit a pool of cheap labor. This is modern slavery, reflected in the paltry wages of public works employees, $16.83 an hour, 35000 a year. With inflation driving up food, gas, housing, and health care costs, this is the low-wage group that is forever struggling to cover their basic needs, long-term driving them into debt. A combination of inflation, stagnant wages, and debt has produced a poverty crisis in Rocky Mount with dire consequences. Blight, homelessness, food insecurity, home foreclosures, and, of course, crime. The request for a 10% across-the-board increase for these overworked and underpaid folks met with strong and immediate pushback, reason being it needs an additional $1 million in the proposed budget. Underpaid equals underprivileged and undervalued. Increasing the pay rates of law enforcement and first responses by 36% and 27% respectively and denying a 10% increase for these poorly paid public works employees is morally reprehensible. They deserve a living wage too. Rocky Mount. Also, I might ask to clear this at some point. Please, I uh, must be respectful of the speakers. Rocky Mount. Must be respectful of the speaker. I'd like to hear a plea of freedom of speech. I think it's important. I think it's important that everybody's here participating. But I'd like to ask everybody to please maintain some semblance of order in the in the, in the council chambers. Ms. Shay, please. Thank you. Rocky Mount employs highly trained professionals for public works for a range of vital services to safeguard the lives of humans, animals, and the environment. They are the guardians. They are the guarantors of public safety. You are safe walking on uncluttered roads, sidewalks, park, parks, and in your neighborhood. You are safe from disease, air and water pollution due to proper management of trash and disposal animal carcass. You are safe from contaminated water flooding the city and your community, to name just a few. Rocky Mount is livable, clean, sanitary, comfortable, and safe because of these low-wage city workers 
who, who toil in all weather conditions. They deserve a living wage. They deserve what they ask for, 25%. Raise their depressed wages. Pay them like you cannot lose them. Pay them and show them that you appreciate their commitment and their, their dedication to their work. They are worthy of any amount that is in the proposed any additional amount in the proposed budget. Remember when you were so eager to spend 20 million for an urgent judicial center. Nothing is now more urgent than to spend an extra one million dollars to improve the lives of this low income public works employees, Thank the you. backbone of essential Thank services you. in Rocky Mountain. Thank you. Thank you. sense if we can just maintain some control. I clearly I understand you're here to support but saw you stand up. I think that's awesome. I really do. And we're hearing the message. But at the same time, I, I don't want to treat this as if it's a game show who can generate the most excitement, you know, regardless of what the issue is. So please if I can ask you to show some more corn. Thank you. But this time I'd like to ask of this Mary Warren to pray. This very warm. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mary Warren. I live at 318 Emma Avenue. And I come here tonight to address the issue about the Dollar General. Uh, we, the community, do not feel that this, our community needs this type of store in our neighborhood. We are working to transform Southeast Rocky Mountain community. And I understand all the um, concerns about the city wanting to do something with that kind of all mill section. We've been talking about that for years. But I feel right now that so many people that spoke out in our wars meeting that we don't need a, job, a dollar general at this particular time. What I believe that we, the community, we are getting ready to do a clean up, clean up of our community. And I believe as we move forward in the Southeast Rocky Mountain community, and as the city grows, we will not have a problem finding a business to put on that land. But if we give Dollar General that opportunity now, we are not going to bring, they are not bringing the quality to our neighborhood. And I just feel like we need to wait and give the community and give other business the opportunity to bring something of value to the Southeast Rocky Mountain community. I've been in that community for 40 years. I saw it die. And I now see the community on the rise. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Councilman Joyner. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Say to one in our community that we not only hear you, hear our community. <coughs> and as Councilman Black would have said, uh, we have in our club session. Uh, and uh, not a closed session, but our council will hold to address these issues and looking at how we can respond to these corridors in our community, looking at them as a whole and not as individuals. Thank you, Mr. Joyner. This time I'd like to invite Reverend Nehemiah Smith, Jr. to pray. <coughs> Evening. First, I'd like to say I don't understand how important for what's right is out of order. Anyway, anyway, in a world that often places high value on positions of power and prestige, it is crucial for us as a city to adopt a different perspective. We must recognize the worth and dignity of every worker, regardless of their role or status. Let us commit to valuing and appreciating the contributions of low-level workers in our city and the broader society. May we strive to create environments that recognize the work of these fellow citizens. One of the ways we can demonstrate our, our value for low-level workers is by ensuring they are paid their worth. Fair and just wages not only provide for the needs of individuals and their families, but also acknowledge the significance of their contributions. 
When we compensate workers fairly, we affirm their dignity and acknowledge their efforts in doing what many may refuse to do. The city of Rocky Mountain must strive to create a culture that values and compensates all workers equitably. We just don't have it, Reverend Smith. We don't have the resources. It's not that you don't have the resources, you don't have the desire. Don't tell me what you can't do. When you wanted an event center, you built it. When you needed to remove a racist monument, you found the money and you brought it down. When you needed property for growth, you took it. Where there was disrepair, you fixed it. When the city needed a fresh look, you rebranded it. These men need to be fairly paid. That means that you're going to pay them. May we be agents of change, advocating for justice and equality in the workplace. Let us treat all workers with respect, affirming their value and acknowledging their efforts in doing what many may refuse to do. In this way, we reflect the heart of Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. 25% 25 across the board before you implement the, um, the new system that you're going to vote affirmatively on on the 26th. And then we'll go from there. But I'll be back. I'd like to invite Ms. Nellene Richardson to the podium. Mr. Mayor, can I, can I say something yes, sir, just briefly? So that's okay. I was trying to reserve my comments for the budget section. So if anybody talking about increases or changes to the budget need to stay and hang around and not leave when public comment is over so that you can participate in that discussion. Okay, I'd like to invite Ms. Nathleen O'Ree to the oh, I'm sorry, Nelly. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> um, please excuse me, I'm talking. I had both surgery today. But um, I'd like to say to all of the city councilmen that has come out for our love walk, I would like to say thank you very much. Um, we made a lot of connections with different people and we are working with them to bring some change in our communities. And for any city councilman that has not been able to come, we would still love to reschedule and be with you. We understand when you have other things that had to come up. Um, but I would really like to give a special thank you to Mr. T.J. Walker, city councilman. Um, he spent the entire day with us Saturday, um, introduced us to some very great people, and we have really made a love connection. And um, we have other things that will be coming to each city councilman and mayor. Um, I talked to Mr. Walker about some of the things that we plan to do in our community and the things that we want to see come. So y'all will get it, and by the next city council meeting, y'all should have it on the agenda. Um, because we plan to keep coming in the name of love, and we expect to see our mayor and the rest of you city councilmen out in our communities. We are also doing voter registration, so you know what that means, elections are coming. And we expect to hold each and every last one of you accountable for us. And so that's all that I have. And I'll be back. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to invite Ms. Nathleen O'Ree to the podium. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Manager, and City Council members. My name is Nathleen O'Ree. And I live in the Meadowbrook community. And I am here advocating for the sanitation workers to get increased pay um, from our um, budget. And, you know, I'd just like to thank them, you know, for the beautiful job that they do in the Meadowbrook community. They keep the park looking good, keep the streets looking good. Um, I've been participating in the love walks, and we can walk down clean streets because of our sanitation workers. And I would just greatly appreciate any efforts that the city council could make to give these people a well-deserved increase, because I know it goes in my garbage can. And when they come to pick it up, I don't hear no complaints, nothing's left inside the street except the garbage can. They put it back where they get it from. 
and sometimes I've seen the trucks come through with just one person, used to three people. One guy drove the truck and two people jumped out on each side. But now one truck comes with one guy, he's got this little automatic thing. I don't know how he does it, but they keep doing it over and over and over very consistently for 52 weeks a year. And I am thoroughly uh, impressed and I pray that you will acknowledge their efforts with the race. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I appreciate everything the sanitation department does do. I'd like to invite Mr. Colonel Stancy, Colonel Stancy to the podium. Settlement mentality from. 
And of course, you heard people tonight talk about the sanitation workers should have settled. I applaud that effort. It means that we don't have that settlement type of mentality. Yet, for over years, since 2008, I've seen this council talk about poverty, getting rid of uh, that, eradicating it, looking at health disparities, looking at educational opportunities, and et cetera. But then, before you remove that today, was bringing the Dollar General to our community. After we had many meetings in which folks said they want it, got in the meeting and, and it was said it's a done deal, there's nothing that you can do about it, so just take it as it is. But yet we'll go around and say that people should hear the voice of the public. We'll go around and say all this great stuff, especially if we're looking for votes. But the reality is people matter 365 days a year, not just during election time. I would hope that there's community engagement when it comes to what these taxpaying folks want in our community. We don't elect kings and queens, we elect people as servants to help us move our community forward. That is our role, that is our responsibility. And when the land was owned, and still is, owned by the city, to have the, the thought process that you're going to bring in a poverty praying business like the Dollar General, that speaks against the culture and values that I believe this council has. Not only will I work to hold Democratic and unaffiliated, but Republicans too. All of us have our responsibility. But again, as Pastor Smith talked about, I've seen this council do development when you built the event center. I've seen this council do development when you uh, revisioned the Douglas Block. I've seen this, the city council development when you built the sports complex. So I know you know what development is. How in the world did this thing get on this agenda for tonight? That is the question. But I hope that as I live, that we'll never see it happen again. Let's not bring poverty, uh, praying type of businesses in our community. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I'd like to invite Troy Davis to the party. Sanitation workers, we hear you. Ms. Edith Joseph, I hear you, if you're still in the room. Um, the other day when you came to my office, I didn't have a chance to speak with you. Um, but I, I hear you. Southeast Rocky Mountain, I hear you. Um, Little Raleigh, the Hilltop, all these communities are neglected, and it's neglected by policies that part of this council and just the city of Rocky Mountain as a whole has neglected the citizens of Rocky Mountain. Um, and I say that to say, we have houses that was torn down, that the city of Rocky Mountain failed to collab, collect demolition fees that are sitting around that we can't even collect because it's been past 10 years. The statute of limitation has expired. But the citizens won't never know that because their elected officials won't tell them. Taxes that are due. We have a house on Falls Road. The roof is collapsing. The lights is on. What type of hazard is that? I wrote down Nelson Street the other day. I think it's 333 Nelson Street. I don't think tax has been paid in a while. The roof is caving in. But we have a community development department that has given out money to $200,000 on a house on Bright Street. $200,000 to build one single house. That is absurd. It's clear, Mr. Williams, I don't think this council knows what development is. They know how to spend their money recklessly. We need to hold these elected officials accountable, and we need to make sure they understand what development is. We have vacant lots. We have boarded up homes. That is how you eradicate blight in our communities. And I'm going to hold this council accountable to do just that. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Okay, that brings us to, oh, yes, I'm sorry, Councilman Knight. Um, the comment was made about the council brought this Dollar General uh, to be put on the agenda. That is not true. And the deal was brought, brought and struck whatever words you use by Mr. Peter Barton is no longer here. Uh, we heard uh, the morning show, well, not the morning show, WNCR. W uh, I think the phone called Mr. Joyner and explained to him. But Mr. Joyner, Councilman Joyner, 
It's not to be blamed for neglect for the last hundred and some years. We are not to be held responsible for what people who came before us have not done. It was this council that was told that we could not tear down those silos that was contaminated, had been there for years. Mel Turnage told us we couldn't do it, but we did it. Tip Top Bakery sitting across from Love Hope, which is now Foster Memorial Church, for years blighted, drug haven. It was this council that took the initiative to tear it down. This council instituted minority women business development because we had less than 1% of black contractors in this city participating in millions and millions of dollars of your tax dollars. It was this council, this man that says community wealth building, this council that brought Dr. Jim Johnson in to talk about wealth being built in our community. This takes a long time to catch up with 120 years. And we're just getting here. 20 years, 15 years of blink of an eye of planned development of infrastructure, roads, highway, water, and sewer. It was the blockbuster and those that came before us that left the houses in our community that now dilapidated the downtown. We didn't own nothing but Douglas Block. But this council, with well, the council before that, and this council decided to save our history, to bring the core of Rocky Mount back. Because it wasn't like Mayor Obama said our downtown was on Wednesday and Bibby New Boulevard and tried to chastise Ruben Blackwell. And we said, no, downtown is right here in Rocky Mount, Main Street, Tower Street, Washington Street. It was this council that when the mayor said that you were a person wasn't a real developer, we said, we believe in you, and we're going to, like my mother said, hope you with your dreams and your vision. It was this council. When this city hall didn't have but two blacks, and now it mirrors this population, I'm going to cut it off. That, you know, we talk about the quorum and somebody's preaching. But this young lady that comes down and talk about saying, well, you're exactly right. And it's hard not to clap when you hear a speech such as that coming from a city, or such as a speech coming from the late Dr. Martin Luther King and those who came before us because it resonates down in your soul and it makes you want to say hallelujah when you're in church, but in here we can clap. And we can clap for a baseball, football team. We can clap on the truth. Now, I'm not trying to grandstand, but it was this council that had a serious discussion. Don't attack us for what we're trying to do to help us go back, read the record, read the minutes, read the <laughs> newspaper, see the TV show, read the blogs of who they call names about property pips, social welfare, edge home ain't no good, y'all thugs, y'all nobody, y'all welfare queen, it's not us. We are trying to pull our people up. Don't blame us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Mize. Anybody else here to speak? Okay. Councilman Mize, Councilman Mize, that brings us to item number nine on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. I'd like to remind everybody that item nine and J has been removed from consideration for not item nine, eight, I, and B. We'll be voted on as items 13, 14, 15. So with that, I'd like a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda with those exceptions. So we'll move. Yeah. All right. Uh, Councilman Mike has motion, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Item passes. That brings us to item 10, which is a public hearing relative to the public budget that was on this fiscal year 2023 2024. 
This time I'll open the floor to anyone who cares to speak from the public related to the proposed budget for City of Rocky Mountain 2023-2024. I haven't seen the budget laid out the way that it has been. I, that, that's laid out, I want to uh, say, uh, great in the design of present, the presentation of the particular budget. I know Ken Hunter and staff certainly, I'm sure, have been working hard, along with the managers, working hard to, to make that happen. Uh, but it, it gave a sense of just vibrancy, just looking at how it was uh, displayed. Uh, you saw on the front page of the budget where it gave consideration to the fire department, the police department, etc., cetera, um, and, and, and others. What, what I will say, about the budget. I, I do, as I've been talking for years about uh, updating our comprehensive plan, I was excited to see that there were dollars set aside uh, for the comprehensive plan, also dollars set aside for downtown um, and uh, another plan, the housing, I think it was housing plan uh, for the other. Uh, at first, I saw the amount of money that was, the city would be receiving from interest income. I said, wow, that's a lot of money, but I I realized that uh, those, those numbers seem to bear out to be true and consistent with what Edge County County is projecting and their potential uh, interest income for the dollars that they have um, as well. Lastly, um, while we understand the concerns of employees with the city, uh, if the council can, can find that uh, those dollars without an increase in property taxes, wonderful. Um, but, but I do know that you have to live within your budget. We understand what needs are of citizens as everyday people, such as myself. Um, it's also trying to work uh, within a 
budget. Um, but, but the way, of course, math is, it ain't with so much 25%, so 30%, so 60% uh, once you give when you got 100% at the end of the day. We want to speak realistically as well. Um, and Andy, are there other ways of showing appreciation uh, for bonuses and things of that nature for staff retention? Uh, they can also help. I, I don't know. But what I do know is I don't want this council to vote on property tax increase. That's what I do know. Um, as a what private act I have in around the building, uh, a city. So, so those are things because, again, council don't make money, right? You get it from taxpayers, you get it from grants. And I understand the hard work of these men and women every single day. That, that's, not, that's not to be disputed. One thing I don't like is, is for those to be called um, the lower total poll workers. I believe that everybody's high in the total poll at the end of the day. And so if that means, if that means you to change the messaging as to how these people are received in our community uh, for our staff within the organization structure, then that's some internal conversation that needs to be had as to how you can show appreciation for all workers. But thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Any other member here from the public? My friend and I, uh, we agree to disagree on this. I believe that uh, if you're going to call them essential workers, pay them like essential workers. If that's what you're going to call them, pay them that way. Find the money. Like I said, you find money everywhere else. Find the money for these men and these women that work hard every day. And if that means, hey, that you got to raise the property tax, so be it. Because these people deserve to be paid. They do a great job in this city. We find money for everything else, find money for them. Thank you. Any other, any other member of the public here wanting to speak to our budget? Yes, I'm sorry. Once again, my name is Mrs. Ori, and I just have two um, a brief question regarding the hiring of another assistant city manager because we do not want anyone to get burned out. We want everybody to you know, have their fair share of the workload. And is there any consideration that's being made for it? Praise God. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, please, please come forward. Conception that the city council 
makes the budget. We do not create the budget. The budget is created by the staff. The city council sets the priorities. The staff reflects those priorities and how things are budgeted. Well, we don't create one spreadsheet, one numerical. We do not set the value for anything. We respond to what's given to us. Now, we can say, as a council, that our priority is public works, and I will also include in there the, uh, the folks who work in parks and recreation, because it's one and the same. You know, you're cleaning up ditches, you're clearing properties, you're making sure that our neighborhoods and our streets are safe and clean. And uh, you do it without um, complaining, and you do it regardless if it's 100 degrees outside or 20 below, you are there, and we appreciate you. And um, you deserve to not be taken for granted. That being said, um, we have a manager, he has a team, and so, if it's the desire of the council, as reflected by our accountability to the people, which means you, then it's up to them to bring us something that we can vote on. I want to be real clear about that. We do not create budgets. So that's a conversation. My question, when we had a um, committee whole, I think last month, I asked the HR department, are we certain that the supervisors and department managers really understand how to do appropriate um, evaluations so that you all are being rewarded fairly all along the way? I see head shaking, that means something. That means something. Want to know, do we have classes of importance in the city of Rocky Mountain? Some people consistently receive an exceptional outstanding, and other people receive a meat standard, meat standard, meat standard. That's where your money is, and how you get evaluated. And that's what, that's what builds sustainability within a budget, is that you don't have to go across the board and give everybody something one time because bills go up, things go up every day. Cost of living goes up every day. So to me, there's also an equal pressure on how our leadership is leading in each department. How are you being evaluated every day? And are you being fairly compensated? Now, in our budget, um, I've been told that we have a comp plan. And I'm not clear about what the comp plan is because we haven't seen it. We've heard about it, but I don't think we've seen it. So I would hope that we would see the actual document or at least a summary of the document so we're clear um, that the positions that we are voting on and are uh, taking a position on are in alignment with what the will of our community is. I've also been told that the comp plan and study does not cover every single position. That's what I've heard. I don't know that. I don't know that. And that's not my lane. That's not my lane. I'm going to try to stay within it. But what I do know is that fairness and equity and treating people right is everybody's responsibility. That's what I do know. And our budget should reflect that. So um, what I'll also say is that somebody stated it clearly, you know, we have to um, manage what our priorities are. And if our priorities are to value our people first, and then our projects second, then we need to think about where our priorities and projects are. And it doesn't mean that we have to cut everything in the inner city in order to pay people right. That ain't right either. So I would just say that, um, you know, my perspective is that I do support, and this is just Ruben Blackwell, I'm not speaking for anybody, I'm speaking for myself, that I do support um, 
an increase targeted specifically to folks that everybody else takes for granted and looks over. And without having our trash and our recycling picked up every single week, if we can't value you, then we don't value ourselves. So that's my perspective about that. Thank you. Thank you. Who else here to speak? Yes, Councilman Mike. Thank you, Councilman Whitewell. In reference to the budget, I know our uh, paid comp studies in our budget, uh, but I would ask this council if we would pull that out until we get uh, information of the uh, paid comp study. Uh, in 2021, when it up now was the paid comp study. And the reason why the council didn't pass it because all the employees were not going to get a raise. And that's when we decided to get 4.5 uh, percent across the board for all employees. Uh, this year, uh, and also in 2021, uh, the comp study included environmental service, water resources, as targeted areas for additional increases. And this appeared to be eliminated in this uh, paying comp study because we only focus on fire, police, and energy resources. And so I ask that we pull that out. And I have uh, two more pages of, of, of concerns in reference to that. And one, one I do like to say that uh, in 2021, they increased uh, the minimum wage pay to $15. Now in 2023, we increased the minimum pay to $16.83. And I want you to know uh, how many employees would this be affected by this increase? Other like to, to point out with this upsetting. Uh, I'll bring that back when we, we discuss the budget again. But I think the council really needs to see what are the ranges are, what the positions are, and uh, how and, and what employees are going to be making. Uh, yes, I stood with sanitation, I stood with parts and rec, fire, police, all our employees. I value all of our employees. I'm quite sure the council does as well. Um, but I, I, I want to say, um, I mentioned, someone mentioned 25% increase uh, in, in, in my uh, comments uh, at our last council meeting, I said 10% and left out parts of red. Um, we have a lot of employees who we have left out. Not we, let me back up. Uh, with our manager made the bold move, uh, we made uh, city, local news, state, wide news, and national, <laughs> and caused the dominoes effect, and it was a 36% increase. And no one, I don't think, is going to go against our police department because we want to, uh, we want to be protected uh, in this community, and they deserve, you know, exactly what they got. Uh, so it's our fire department which I believe is going to be 27%. We appreciate what you all do, very dangerous work. Wouldn't take nothing from you. Uh, but we also have to look at all our employees from our sanitation department, parts and rec, our water meters, uh, readers, all our clerks, because they're all valued employees with this city. So we have to task uh, Brother Blackwell. He said we don't create the budget, but we can direct our city manager to go back and adjust the budget and to consider uh, what we have heard. If the council don't direct our city manager for what to do, if we can't say it's not in the budget. We manage three people, city manager, the clerk, and the attorney. The city manager managed all of you all which is staff. But this council got to give our city manager direction to bold move for 30%, 27%. We got to say, as a council, we want to see sanitation, public works, parks and regs, whatever else, get a percentage before the pay income study. I don't know how we're going to do it, how we how you going to do it, <laughs> you know, without bankrupting the city, baby. 
but we got to figure it out and give him a direction on what to do, mayor and council members. We have to give him that direction. We have to say what we want him to put in the budget. Am I wrong? I'm asking my council, am I wrong? That's what I said. I said priorities. That's right. We church, we said, look at your neighbor, it's the neighbor. Am I wrong? <laughs> am I right, Mr. Lyons? I, I, I feel confident that uh, we, we're going to make things uh, work. And, um, we've got to work within, we've got to work within the, the money that we have. So we'll see what we can do. And I think we have more talk to do. Thank you. That's what I want to hear. So you're all listening. We have more talking to do, but we're moving in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have anything else they'd like to add? Yes, Councilman TJ Walker. Thank you, uh, everybody for coming to sanitation, uh, men and women, and for everyone who came here tonight to be a part. I will ask that uh, we haven't, I think Councilman like just said, we haven't seen the uh, commissary. So I would ask that we look at that first to make sure it is where, because we're making a lot of uh, comments now without seeing the details. So let's just make sure to see the details um, that our manager staff has set before us. Um, we're hearing all the comments and then we'll move from there. Because uh, I think Council Knight has asked us to pull it before we, uh, before we haven't seen it. So I think we need to lay eyes on it first. And then move forward because um, I have, I think the uh, last manager, <coughs> the situation I'm on the since 2019, but we did not give it a chance, we did not uh, approve of that comp study. And so um, we made the changes that need to be made, but we need to make sure we look at the details and then move, move accordingly. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Councilman Dalton. Um, I agree with uh, Councilman T.J. Walker, and um, I would also like to say, um, City Manager Keith Rogers is, is here. Um, we hired Mr. Rogers because he's a he's a um, competent uh, city manager, and he's going to move our city forward. And we cannot move our city forward. He cannot move our city forward without the staff, uh, qualified staff, well-paid staff. I say this because I, I have full confidence in our city manager, and I know that, that things will be, um, he, he has to make decisions on, on what to do with staff, and I think it, it's a difficult thing because everybody wants more. Heck, I want more. I'm in my own business. I can't pay myself more. But I, I say that because we've got to work within the budget, and it's also, um, I, I've had a few talks with the city manager and part of it, and, and so has the rest of the city council. And we've also heard about opportunities for advancement. I, and I think within, um, I think our city manager is, and I don't want to speak for you, Mr. Rogers, but I feel confident there's opportunities for advancement where maybe in the past there have not been that. We talked about it um, when, when we were presented in the committee, the whole, was that two? Too many of the holes. Okay. So I say that because it's more than just the dollar today, and I'm not trying to make excuses. But we got to we got to work within, and I and I can't make excuses. I don't know what it is, but I feel confident, and I want it to be everyone to go away. I feel confident with our city manager and session you. Thank you, Councilman Jordan. Yes, <laughs> let me thank uh, City Council, Mayor, City Manager, and Staff. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight to express your right and freedom to express yourself. Uh, I hope that our managers and these departments will understand workers expressing themselves at this level. Also, as a council, we appreciate our citizens for coming and expressing your desires to us as well. And all of us have to agree to hear each other and do the best we can for each other as we move forward and not to victimize each other in any way for expressing our thoughts and belief. And I think if we do that, then we'll meet those goals and objectives, not only today, 
and in the future to come. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilman Knight. When I said pull the big comps that I was talking about, uh, if we approve the budget uh, with that item in there, uh, that we should um, have a copy of it so we can look at it and not just pass it. Because when we pass it, then anything can go in there. So I would like to see that uh, if it's a line item in the budget for that, it's to remove it. If we don't get it before we vote on the budget, uh, so we can know what's in the um, pay income set. Thanks for the clarification. With that, we'll move on to item number uh, 11, which is consideration of minutes and recommendations from Planning Board meeting, which was held on May 9th of 2023. This time, I'd like to have a motion to acknowledge the receipt of the Planning Board minutes. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Joyner, to second. Second. Second by Councilman Tavares Walker. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, like so. That brings us to the public hearing. It's relative to the following rezoning request recommended for approval and found in compliance with the comprehensive plan by the planning board. It's requested by the Shields Family Partnership to rezone two parcels containing plus or minus 0.32 acres at 803 Carter Street, 5612 North Tilly Street from I-1 to B-5. Is there somebody here from the staff who can speak to this for us? Old Cook, uh, Interim <coughs> Director of Development Services. Uh, this rezoning request uh, was recommended for approval by the City Planning Board at their meeting last month in May. Uh, the area is, the property itself is personally zoned light industrial. Uh, the request was spurred by the uh, desire for the owner to redevelop the property by some of the standards that apply to by industrial district, uh, specifically the required building setbacks made redevelopment of the property uh, prohibitive. Uh, so uh, staff recommended approval and planning board has followed suit to uh, redesignate this property as uh, commercial services or B5 district. Happy to answer any questions you all may have. All right, any questions for the group? So, uh, yes, sir. I'm not, Please, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. So, um, so there is an interest in redeveloping the property, or they can you give us, yes, sir, reusing the property. Um, the, uh, I said the, the building setbacks in the I 1 zone require, I think, 75 feet, and the property itself is about 50 feet wide. Uh, so, pretty much eliminated. And the property owners are leading development, they just want to prepare the property for redevelopment. Uh, I believe they want to reduce the site. Yes, sir. So there is a plan. Yes, sir. Any other questions? <coughs> yeah, okay. All right, well, at this time I'll open the um, podium to anybody, a member of the public who cares to speak to this particular issue. So it's more um, pure business, so there's no 
Uh, not at this time. More insured business. Okay. And so we would trust that if that rezoning occurs, that we work with the planning department to ensure that's appropriate and not mandated. Yeah, they develop a plan and they increase. Any other member of the public here that cares to speak to this particular rezoning request? All right, here none. I'll, uh, I'll close the public hearing at this point in time, and then I'll receive a motion to adopt the ordinance. So, that was made by Councilman Blackwell, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, like sign. Uh, item 12 is consideration of a resolution requested by the City Council in response to Senate Bill 169. Um, I, I, I will receive a motion to adopt the resolution as I've written. Second. second. Motion made by Councilman Joyner, seconded by Councilman Daltridge. It's 169. Go ahead, Mr. Daltridge. Um, can, would would y'all mind if I read this in public? Please. Um, well, let me make this argument. Uh, th this was, first of all, our city manager sent a, a letter to our legislative um, um, representation throughout, throughout Rocky Mountain, Edge County, and Nash County, as well as um, um, to the mayors within Nash County and to the Nash County commissioners regarding this. And then also from last meeting, sent one about Senate Bill 248. Um, which um, obviously did not um, do any good, and then also about Senate Bill 675. But this is about 169, <clears throat> and whereas the city of Rocky Mountain has legal authority pursuant to North Carolina General Statute um, 168 58 to proceed with satellite annexation, I just lost it. Um, I apologize. I should have printed it. Um, Whereas there was a request by members of the National Union Board of Commissioners to the local delegation to revise pending legislation to include provisions requiring the city of Rocky Mountain as well as other municipalities in Nash County to provide prior notification of and receive approval from the Nash County Commission in order to proceed with our existing legal authority as municipalities and regarding satellite annexation. And whereas the city of Rocky Mountain is within its authority to approve satellite annexations by petition, allowing property owners to exercise their individual property rights to include their parcel or parcels with the city in the language included in SB 169 fundamentally violates the inherent rights of the city as a municipality in the state of North Carolina to administer affairs within the context of current state law. Now, therefore, uh, you know, technology is great sometimes, but in this particular case, it's not. But anyway, Yeah, the reason I wanted to read it is because basically the Nash County Commissioners would like to um, for to get for the right, city of Rocky Mountain to ask for approval anytime there's a satellite annexation. And this city council, by vote from last time, although we had two city council members that were absent, but they fully agreed after I've spoken with them, goes against everything that is. Um, that is uh, what is provided to us by law and acting as an independent board uh, governing this city. And so we do, we're doing this to uh, let our legislators know that we're against uh, Senate Bill 169. Okay. And this is Ben Foster by whom? The visual bill was originally sponsored by uh, Senator Barnes. It was attached to Senate Bill 169 that it passed the Senate. And it was passed over the committee of the House, and it's stuck in the House committee at the moment. So, what I'm saying, uh, I agree with the resolution, uh, but uh, I want to ask this question because when other bills were being uh, created and was trying to get it to pass into law, we had council members working with Lisa Barnes, Senator Barnes, on certain bills. So I'm asking are those same people 
who publicly stated that he was working on SB 473, or he working on this with Lisa, uh, Senator Barnes. Also, uh, our Senator, uh, House Representative, Mr. Chester, is he working? Uh, what is his position on that as well? And so what I'm saying, when we, or some of us, work with those who have an agenda to move us backwards uh, and then create another bill <laughs> to stop progress, um, then we should recognize that. We should recognize that. So I just want to ask, um, Mayor, are you working with to, her to not do this? Uh, I can tell you this, Councilman, I have been on the forefront of fighting this particular piece of legislation. Okay, thank you. Okay. This is just what I want to know. Because when we, uh, as the council, make a stand, we have to be united. And these people, the bills that they are passing, uh, regressive laws to end the Rocky Mountain, not just this bill, but several bills, we should be united on all of them. That's all I got to say. But I do support the resolution. Okay, do I have a motion to? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I could open up for discussion after we've got a motion on the floor, but if you'd like to speak now, please do. I'll recognize you. I just want to say very quickly I was the one that did not vote for the uh, annexation. But I want to go on record this is an extreme overreach. By the Nash County Board of Directors, and I 100 percent agree with this resolution. This is the responsibility of the city of Rocky Mount, the other municipalities within Nash County, and Nash County Board of Commissioners did wrong in wanting this amendment adjusted or or added to this this bill and i'm glad mr mayor that you fought this and you fought it very hard thank you it's not over yet gentlemen so but, uh, <laughs> but i will entertain a motion to uh, motion to yeah. council to blackwell second i'll give you i'll recognize you okay no we want to motion okay well i saw the blackwell but i'll give it to you know, blackwell and joiner made the motion uh, second by councilman daltrich uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, any any further discussion? Yes. Yes. So I, Councilman I, I concur with um, Councilman Harris. It is an overreach um, and average an overreach from my perspective. And I'm also concerned how um, a county uh, feels they have the um, authority and the right to determine and dictate um, how we manage our business, especially since that county gets an overwhelming majority of revenue from properties that are within the city limits of Rocky Mountain. And we have proven ourselves um, consistently over decades and decades and decades to be um, conscionable um, stewards. We do a good job managing our business. Uh, we heard a presentation today uh, that, uh, from our uh, retail developer that Rocky Mountain um, produces 50% of all retail revenue in a four county region that happens within Nash and Edgecombe counties, outstripping Wilson, outstripping Halifax, but we're not in competition necessarily. Uh, maybe co opetition uh, might be a better word, but um, we're targeted. And it's not right. And so I, I thank you for um, doing what you're doing to propose this. I support the part of it, uh, this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Any other um, comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. So if you recall, at the beginning of the meeting, we changed um, the, the order of things. So item 13. This consideration of 9H on the consent agenda. 
And so it is a request to send resolution R-2021-51 entitled Resolution declaring official intent of the City of Rock Mountain to reimburse expenditures made for the construction of fire station number two. Uh, the project was increased from $4.1 million to $11.1 million. And resolution declaring official in Tennessee to reimburse expenditures made for construction of fire station number two. The expected maximum obligation is uh, 11.1 approved in the annual budget. Expected financing is secured to solve the pursuant North Carolina General Statute 160A-20 and the resolution requirement of the United States Treasury. So the request is that we rescind the resolution R-2021. I'll accept the motion at that time to rescind that resolution. So moved. Uh, Councilman Daltrich and second by Councilman T.J. Walker. Is there a need for discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Councilman Don Harris, I'll recognize you. I'll recognize you, Councilman Dalton. Okay. Um, originally, I, I just want to make it clear, because I read this originally as is the fire station number two was um, going to be uh, $11.1 million, but when we were presented with a $4.1 million budget. And, um, and then that was uh, corrected after I asked some questions. And this is only about where we're going in front of the LGC to ask for funding up to that amount. It does not mean that we're approving the, um, the construction costs to be $11 million. It's only saying we're asking for LGC approval to get uh, approval for financing. So I want to make that clear to everyone because I was not clear. So um, I think it could be easily um, construed um, the way I was thinking. And so I want to set the record straight, not only for this audience, but the, for the audience that's going to report on this as well. Councilman Harris. Uh, yes, uh, Councilman Daughters, I uh, thank you for your 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 information you just uh, indicated to the public. I just want to uh, the reason why I asked this to be pulled from the agenda. I realize this is only going to the LGC, but as we go and do these major construction projects. As I indicated in Durham, as I indicated in one of the budget working sessions, anything over $500,000 to be construction wise is major. The council needs to be given information quarterly on how these projects are being funded. Are we within budget? Are we going to be under budget? Are we going to be over budget? And one of the ways that we can do our job is if we see that a project is going to come under budget, then we need to know how that excess money, if we approve something of a certain amount, we need to know how any excess monies will be put back into the city coffers. That way we can have a good idea of excess monies that can perhaps be used for other purposes. We just need to be mindful of how these large construction projects are going to be financed in terms of expectations. I don't think there's any construction project recently that's probably come in under budget. And it's going to be interesting to see going from four million one to eleven million one. I hope the total cost is going to be significantly below eleven one. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Any other conversation? Comment. I have a motion before the second to rescind the resolution R twenty twenty one fifty one uh, as read before. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. So item 14 was the consideration of the resolution authorizing the following of an application for approval of an installment financing contract authorized by North Carolina General Statute 160A-20 for fire station number two. So moved. Motion made by Councilman T.J. Walker, second by Chilton Morris. Councilman Joyner. Uh, is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Question carries. Item 15 is item 9D. 9D. 
from the uh, consent agenda. That item is consideration of a quick plan D D for point zero two three acre gap between the property line of Ru Ruby Gray Airs and the municipal stadium to the National Board of Education. Um, the request is that we pass a motion to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute quick plan D. Uh, is there a motion? During our uh, uh, during the public comment, when Mr. Anderson had approached us about the uh, the deed to the uh, province of municipal stadium, if we could uh, delay this to our next council meeting and ask our uh, city attorney if he could get uh, their process and uh, through public record how they can conducted the bid process to see if actually that was done correctly and that those uh, gentlemen were not discriminated against. I know it was after the oranges, but I would just ask the council uh, if we would do right by those gentlemen. And if, it, if we see that uh, it has been done, that we will call that to the board attention by writing them an official letter. So I request the table motion? Yeah. Yes. All right, I have a request the table, sir. Second. Second made by Councilor Joyner. Uh, all in favor, is there a need for discussion to table? Yes. No discussion on table, right? Okay. All right, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Item has been tabled. With that, there is no other business to appear for. Hold on, maybe there is. I need a motion actually to consideration for uh, two. To adopt the new resolution for the financing of um, the official fire station. I thought we had done that. But okay. Question made by Councilman Knight, second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. All right, having no other business, here before the city council, I now adjourn the meeting.